Welcome to the CEO's Open Discussions Corner at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. My name is Michelle Halliday. Today, we are excited to be welcoming to the show Mr. Chris Bursey. Chris is the founder and CEO of Direct Communication Solutions, Inc. DCS is a very innovative technology company trading on the stock market. And we are excited to give everybody a glimpse into the psychology behind this company. One of its key initiatives, which they have already brought to the market, is a wireless beer keg monitoring system, which is called Brucey. So everybody can see that we are a little bit different, especially for trading on the stock market. Now, the size of the beer industry itself is enormous. There are hundreds of different styles of beer and then thousands of those below them featured. There are beer clubs, beer connoisseurs, um, beer tasting parties that have exclusive invitations all over San Diego. And this is where Chris is based out of. Chris, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for having me. We are excited to have you here. This is so different. I love bringing startup companies to everyone so they can get in on the ground floor of things, especially when they're so innovative. Now, you are focused, one of your industries anyway, is upon the beer industry, as I mentioned. Let's go into the numbers of that industry itself, because I mentioned San Diego specifically, Chris, but this is a worldwide social phenomenon when it comes to beer. So talk to us about it in terms of the economic statistics. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at the the overall market, you know, I think in 2020, according to Craft Brewers Association, there were approximately 380 million kegs of beer sold in the U.S. market. Um, it was down last year about 22% um, just because of COVID and all the bars and restaurants being closed. But now that that's starting to open up, um, we'll start to see more, you know, more beer flowing, if you will. Um, and, you know, when you really look at beer, it's, it's a science, right? Some of the craft beers are, you know, they're fused with nitrogen, you know, they're different ingredients. And it, more importantly, it's a very high margin perishable item for a bar and restaurant, right? Because it does have a shelf life. So being able to manage that, you know, that life cycle of that keg of beer and provide that real time data back to the bar owner or the distributor, you know, it's very valuable to them. So that's really what got us started. And, and you know, to be honest with you, it, com- it really combines my two favorite things, IOT and beer. So it's a, uh, <laughs> right. it's a, it's a personal win for me. So I'm a, uh, very motivated to make it successful. <laughs> Not alone in that combination. Chris, let's talk about the details of Bruce yes. as an innovation. I made light of it at the top of this interview, but this is very serious technology when it comes to the financial management of the overall beverage industry. What does Brucey do and what kind of impact does it have? Great question. So, you know, from the financial side, when you look at a keg of beer, the industry average is about a 20% loss, right? So there's 1,984 ounces of beer in a keg. 20% of that is about 400 ounces equals about 25 pints of beer. You're losing 25 pints of beer at $5 a pint. You're losing about 120, $125 a month per keg. And it, you know, the average is, the average bar and restaurant will go through four to six kegs per tap per month. So when you start adding up the numbers, it's a massive loss. And some of the key contributors to that financial loss are, you know, temperatures not right, CO2 pressures not right, um, overpouring, spillage, and theft, right? So free drinks. So what the technology really does is it harvests all that big data from that keg. And then we can tell you how many ounces have gone through that keg down to the ounce. So you can recognize all that revenue before you change out that keg. It will monitor the temperature at the keg level. So, you know, you know that the temperature is right um, level. You're not getting foam. It's not flat. It's a brand issue. Um, Monitors CO2 pressure. So you know that that beer is being pushed through at the right pressure. 
We built in um, foam over beer to address the loss of foam because foam is 25% beer. So four ounces of foam is an ounce of beer. And then the last thing we built into it was a, uh, the capabilities to shut the system off. So from a liability issue for you know food and beverage, if the last call is 10 p.m., you can uh, set the system up to shut all your kegs off at the tap le- or the keg level at 10 p.m. And then you can take all that data after the day is over, match it up to your point of sale system, and you can see how many ounces were poured versus how many ounces were actually sold. So it's a, you know, there's multiple touch points that really solve problems for barn restaurant owners that sell draft beer. Yeah, for anyone who's ever worked from a bar owner's perspective or inside even the restaurant industry, this is a game changer in terms of business because I, a lot of the beer is poured after hours. I'm sorry, I don't mean to run anyway, but this is the truth. And to the bar owner's perspective, they're losing so much money and they don't know where it goes and they have no way of measuring it. Right. It's, um, you know, again, we like to think of it as we harvest the big data off of whatever. It could be a vehicle, a machine, a bar, a restaurant, a keg. We can then give that big data back in a usable fashion. And then that allows bar owners or business owners to, you know, effectively and efficiently run their business. And, you know, you can really see the actual ROI by using the technology. This is just brilliant. Now you are focused on the IOT technology. And for anyone who's not familiar with that acronym, um, IOT stands for the internet of things. What it does, it provides anyone the opportunity to sort of remotely monitor or access across the internet. Um, What are some of your other projects and initiatives? Because this is really something that could be customized for anyone. It's, you know, it's a highly scalable IoT solution as well, right? So with the Brucey beer monitoring system, you can monitor your kegs of beer, but then you can expand that to other aspects of the business or the facility and monitor, you know, temperature for your perishable food sources in your walk-in refrigerator, reach-in refrigerators, you know, your glycol machines for the, the beer, your HVAC, your doors, your you know, CO2 pressure, it, it's, it's really a, you know, an unlimited puzzle, if you will, right? I mean, you can build on it and you can just continue to harvest that big data and then you enable those business owners to, you know, really run their business based on the efficiencies. And, you know, I look at a lot of it like it's an insurance policy, right? As a society, we're conditioned to buy insurance on our house, our car, our life, our teeth, our eyes, you know, whatever. It's an insurance policy that it will tell you that your machine or your asset or whatever you're monitoring has a problem that you can act on before that problem becomes a disaster and costs you thousands of dollars. Right. And many times right across the internet. You can unlock the door, you can turn on the light, you can adjust your temperature, you can be in, exactly, exactly. This is the, you know, it's the lifeline for all of us to information right now. And, you know, we have, we have mobile apps for iOS and Android for, for our solutions. So, you know, it's all about being able to access that data anytime, anywhere and in the palm of your hand. Beautiful. And again, this is a new cutting edge industry. And this is why you're here. I love bringing, we're all about prosperity. We're all about cutting edge. We're all about new so people can get in on the ground floor and really make the money. There's no use stepping in when the stock is, you know, $40. You've missed it (laughs) many times. So if you can find those companies, and this is one of them, um, your company, DCS, it's direct communication solutions. The bottom line is that your company helps to save time, money, lives sometimes. What if somebody gets locked in a refrigerator or something like that with your products and services? Give us the big picture overview of DCS. How long has it been around? How did it start? The whole thing. Um, Started in 2006 in a spare bedroom um, after I left corporate America. So, you know, I did my time on the corporate side, worked for uh, Novotel Wireless or in Seago now. 
um, Kyocera, Motorola. So did the corporate world, you know, learned a lot, got to travel, got to, uh, you know, learn how to deal with people and, you know, the business world and um, took the chance. You know, it was one of those, hey, it's either do it today or never do it. And you know, now here we are and we've grown. <laughs> um, got about 48 employees across, you know, multiple locations. Um, doing very well. We're, uh, we're very small. We're very nimble. And, you know, we, uh, we can make things happen faster than other people. And, you know, our job at the end of the day is to listen to you as the customer Tell us what your, your needs are. Tell us what your wants are as far as, you know, solving your problem or making your business more efficient. And then we take that information. We focus on giving you what you need to solve your problem in real, you know, real world environments. And then we'll build on that and give you what you want. Right. So, you know, we're not a cookie cutter solutions company. We're a very scalable, customized solutions company because, you know, IOT is very broad. It's a very broad term and, you know, you'll get different descriptions from everybody you ask. And to me, it's, it's not about here's a product that does this. It's more about we can build you the product that you need or the solution you need to save you money to help you run your business efficiently. You know, This is so fascinating because IoT really has no limits in terms of inventions, patents, innovations, because anything, anywhere can be customized now. Talk to us about the industries that are already immersed themselves into the Internet of Things. I think people would be surprised. We have trucking. We have everything, all industries. This has no limit for your company expansion. I mean, from my perspective, the best part of IOT is it is unlimited creativity right now. I mean, some of the things that people are doing, I look at them and I'm just like, wow, I, you know, how you came up with that is awesome, but I'm going to call you now and find out what you're doing so I can use it down the road if somebody needs it. Right. But the creativity in our space is amazing. The technology is moving so fast that, you know, there's all kinds of new product solutions. And, you know, you're right. It's everything from trucking to logistics, to pallets, to agricultural, to, you know, forklifts, to pets, to, you know, elderly, to facial recognition, to, you know, AI. It's amazing where it's going and it's exciting. I mean, the future looks very good for, you know, everybody in this industry right now. Chris, what are your tickers and where do you trade? Um, So on the Canadian Stock Exchange, we're DCSI.CN. And then on the U.S., we're DCSX. DCSX. And then what's the one on Canadian? DCSI.CN. Okay. All right. Great. We're going to ask you that at the end of the show, too, just so everyone can jot this down. Now, I want to go into this from an investor's perspective, because um, in terms of shares, I heard that you own... 33% of the stock of your company and you've never sold a share, which is a little bit extraordinary. So you must really believe in this and see where this is going, right? I just want to touch on that for uh, potential investors. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm in it for the long haul. So yes, it's, uh, there's a very wide open, bright future in front of us and, uh, you know, pretty much everybody in this space. And it's, uh, it's an exciting time and, you know, I think we're really at the very beginning of a tsunami of IoT and, you know, it's, it solves real world problems, right? It, you know, it gives you that data that allows you to make decisions ahead of time. You know, and, you know to your point, you brought up, you know, water heaters, you know, breaking, you know, for a couple of dollars a month to monitor that, it's, it's insurance right? Because it will tell you when it breaks and then you'll be able to act on it before you find out your whole house has been flooded, right? So it's a, uh, you know, it's a benefit to the, the consumer as well as, you know, the, uh, the insurance side as well. So problem solving, right? That's where all inventions come from. It's uh, giving you the data to take action on your business. And yes. that's, that's really what we do. Talk to us about your management team. 
So I have a awesome team across the board. Um, and I wouldn't be here talking to you honestly without them. So, you know, my executive management team have, you know, I think eight years is the, the shortest that they've been with me out of the five of them. Um, one of them has been with me for over 30 years. We, we were in the military together. So we got out and we've, uh, we've kind of forged the path, you know, for the last 30 years and here we are. Chris, what is the biggest challenge in this industry? I would say there's, you know, the big overall challenge, you know, in my opinion, is just really keeping up with the technology and what's going on and, you know, where everybody's going with things and, you know, and being able to pull all those pieces together for solutions. Um, I would say short term, biggest challenge we're facing right now is, you know, supply chain issues. Right. So the, the pandemics really, you know, really put a, you know, it really kind of delayed everything. It's starting to come back. You know, there's been some other outside issues. You know, there was a fire at one of the uh, GPS wafer companies in China, in uh, Japan. So, you know, it's really kind of pushed the lead times out, but you know, it's a good thing, you know, because then it, it really kind of forces us and our customers and everybody to really start, you know, looking at the big picture of, Hey, you know, we got to plan ahead. But it forces you to innovate. You learn how to get creative real fast and, uh, you know, calling in favors and calling people and, you know, making stuff happen. You know, our, our job is to deliver to our customers and, you know, they don't want to hear excuses. You know, they want, they want to monitor their business. They want to, you know, reduce their expenses and costs and be efficient. You know, our job is to deliver and that's what we do. And that's, you know, that's one of the benefits of being a, you know, a smaller company that, you know, still has that entrepreneurial, you know, approach and attitude. Oh yeah. And who invents, you know, products. I mean, it, it's, it's such a, you know, it sort of gives you ideas on what needs to be invented in order to have solutions and precautionary measures for the future, because everything is so global. What if there is a fire in a gigantic factory in Japan? Yeah. You know what I mean? So let's, let's start to, it, it's just an extraordinary business. Very exciting. What's the latest news on your company and what other products do you have besides Brucey? Um, so we have a couple of, uh, we have a couple of SaaS um, offerings. We have a, a fleet management solution called MyFleet that you know we can do everything from dots on the map to ELD or electronic logging of data to dash cams. Now let me just stop model. you. Now when you say fleet, are we speaking of a fleet of cars, a fleet of ships, a fleet of planes? I'm giving you ideas. Oh, no, <laughs> fair enough. It's a uh, yeah fleet of vehicles. Anything that's uh, you know it can be consumer, it can be you know service industry related you know, long haul trucking, whatever you, uh, whatever you want. And we can, uh, you know, we have the solutions for all those different verticals within that vertical. So we have the fleet side and then we have, uh, we just launched my sensors, which is a uh, IOT sensor ecosystem that is easy to deploy at a very reasonable price. Um, so we designed that in house and we're, uh, we're actually launching that next week. So officially we've, uh, we've gone through everything, but it's, you know, it's a cool solution. It's a, it's a Bluetooth sensor that we design and one sensor can sense temperature, humidity, light, air pressure, um, proximity, accelerometer, door open, door close and panic button or multi-purpose button. So we've combined eight sensor functions into one sensor and then built a platform around that. And then we can start, you know, We'll use that as the foundation to our IoT sensor ecosystem, and then we'll be able to inject other sensors, other technologies into the platform to expand on it for what that can't do for different sensor functions. This just brings up so many things. You know, I'm completely into the environment. And to be able to have a sensor in remote areas as to what's going on and what's needed, I mean, this opens itself up to the entire globe. We're so excited about this. Is there anything that you want to add for potential investors about your company itself? What stage are you in and where do you foresee this going? 
Um, you know, I would say you know, looking at the industry as a whole, we are very well positioned with, you know, the relationships, the channel, the, you know, you know all those pieces. Um, we just, we're, we're in that stage now from a SaaS perspective where we're just now really starting to be able to push it after, you know, all the R&D and investment that went into, you know, really designing and building these solutions and then, you know, getting them ready for commercialization. So, you know, future looks great. You know, there's a big, uh, big opportunity in front of us right now from a technology transition perspective where, you know, the cellular carriers in the U.S. are starting to shut down their 2G, 3G networks, which are, you know, the older technology. And everybody's going to have to move to 4G technology for the latest. So, you know, that uh, that's a great opportunity for us because now all those 2G, 3G devices that have been sold over the last 10 years, they've all got to be upgraded to 4G. Well, this is one of the most exciting industries there is, IoT, the Internet of Things, and being able to be on the cutting edge of this is just extraordinary. Please tell everyone where they can go to learn more about your company, and also please repeat your tickers one more time so everyone has an opportunity to check this out and start to explore what's happening here. Sure. So you can go to our website, uh, www.dcsbusiness.com, and then the ticker symbols are um, on the Canadian exchange, dcsi.cn, and on the U.S. side, it's dcsx. Look forward to talking to you again in the future. Absolutely. We're definitely going to keep up with you. This is fun, innovative, and um, very profitable in the future. <laughs> and, you know, it's wide open. You know, I mean, there are so many, I mean, the next five years in IoT are going to, you know, it's going to be mind boggling what, what we end, you know, where we are in five years with this. Uh, it's great. We're going to keep up with you. Thank you so much for coming on this show today. No, thank you. I appreciate it and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Absolutely. Mr. Chris Bercy, founder and CEO of Direct Communication Solutions, Inc. For the CEO's Open Discussions Corner, I'm Michelle Halliday at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com.